Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Lucas Reyes. I'm a senior front-end developer at ZocDoc. So first of all, I'm going to start uh, with a claim. Some React patterns are more successful than others. OK, so every time you hear like some claim like that, you should think, like, wait, what, what, what do you mean by that? Right? What is uh, successful in that? Like, which kind of projects are you talking about? Successful patterns. And what's your definition of successful? So let's start with that. Uh, for the last uh, I don't know, seven, six years, I've been working on large scale projects. Uh, the last four years, I've been working with React projects. So this is the kind of uh, project I'm talking about. So I'm talking about like long-term products, right? I'm talking about uh, lots of different developers in different teams. So a bunch of people work in the same projects. And all these projects were supporting big business. So they were making money in production. So this makes, uh, we always have to be, be thinking about maintainability because this project is going to be around for years. Uh, we need to, to think about communication. Uh, other people are going to change your code. Uh, they, they need to understand what's happening. You're going to change uh, this code in six months. And in six months, uh, I am a completely different person <laughs> regarding coding. So I, I need to communicate with myself. And also, uh, it needs to be reliable. It can break. And whenever we find a problem, we need to fix it because uh, it's big money that is on the, on the line. So the definition of successful here is whenever a piece of code is successful, that means that it's fast and easy to diagnose and fix bugs that appear. It's fast and easy to add new features to this piece of code. And it's fast and easy to refactor this piece of code and maybe like update dependencies or anything like that. This is the things that we need to do like every day in large scale uh, applications uh, like that. So I'm going to start with, uh, where, with the mix, what I call the mixed component pattern. It's not, this is not one of the successful patterns, but it's like the most common, it's where everything starts. Whenever we start writing uh, React components, we start this way. We have here a component. We have some state on component did mount. We're doing some side effects. Here I'm fetching uh, the Dagobah planet information from the Star Wars API. It's a very interesting planet with lots of information in this API. Uh, on response, um, set in state. So I have loading true. I set loading to false with either the planet or the error. Uh, then I have a couple of methods that return uh, React elements. These are the views that I'm going to call here on my render method, my main render method. So in the render method, I'm looking for state information, right, state data, and calling the, the right view method of this component, uh, depending on the information that, that I have from my side effects. So uh, the mixed component pattern uh, comprises of side effects, state handling, and views in the same component. And they're super easy. They, they, uh, this is uh, easy to start writing. And they work really well for simple use cases. Problem is, in practice, there's no such thing as a simple use case when you have side effects. It always, it always becomes like really quick, a big ball of mud. And then you find yourself like on these desperate situations with like a thousand line component or even a 200 line component is really difficult to understand what's happening. Uh, so to the rescue, container view pattern, I call it the queen of all patterns because this is uh, about 95% of the, the code uh, I write every day and this is 95% of the successful code I've seen. So an example, the same component we had before, the Dagobah component, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm starting with a view. It's, uh, I have a planet view here that has the same three methods that return React uh, component, React elements. Uh, and you can see in the main uh, render method of this uh, view component, or presentational component, as uh, some people like to call it, we are looking at information from props, not from state. So like I'm going to pass this information to this view, right? This component only 
handles view logic. Uh, and now I have my Diggable container that has exactly the state handling logic and the, the side effects in my componented mount. And the render is simply return the planet view that we just defined with uh, current state. So this uh, pattern is simple uh, and a lot of times easy too. So whenever we talk about simple and easy, this is uh, just like, this is my favorite talk ever, like for tech. This is my desert island talk. If you only had the opportunity to watch one, <laughs> look for this guy, Rich Hickey, Simple Made Easy. All right, I think I made the world a little bit better now. Uh, if <laughs> some people will know this for the first time. So um, the container view pattern it's simple in a sense that it's a good separation of concerns, right? Views are 100% composable. This is, it's, it's kind of, it's even cool to, to write views on, on React. It's, it's like just, you just, oh, it's, e it's good to extract them, to create new components. You can play around there. Uh, so when you separate the views, it's much easier to refactor and to do anything uh, with them. And side effects are usually complex and they are the big source of bugs. Usually that's where things get weird. Uh, schema of your APIs, they may change uh, without uh, you knowing no matter what the process you have on your company and stuff. So they are always uh, where uh, weird things happen and they should be isolated. So I, I even would go further, like if you have three side effects, if I, if I have like uh, get information from local storage and fetch some data and fetch some data from a second API, try to write on different uh, containers because, one more time, we think long term. When you think long term, when your product is going to be around for more than, than a year, you never write for the present. You're all, you always write for the future. You write, it's so easy to get feedback in the present. It's so easy to understand if something is going wrong or right right now, but it's really difficult to understand where to fix things in one, two years, uh, in one, two months. So if you separate things, it may be a bit trivial now, but it will save you in the future when you start looking at this uh, at this piece of code again. Uh, so that's it. Ninety-five percent of the successful code I've met in these years of building React are uh, look like that. And uh, the question is, when should I apply this pattern? I think you should try to apply this pattern hundred percent of the time. Whenever you need to do anything, you should either build a container to wrap your previous uh, component or change the views. Um, a quick example here. So imagine I have a component that needs, uh, I, I now need to fetch some, not fetch, to get some info from local storage and feed to the component. What I've seen is people writing, oh, right, let me do like high artist stuff here super generic and then you can plug in whatever storage stuff you, you want and then it, it will be, you can plug whatever component in this and everything is gonna be magical and happen. That's not what we need, we, ju we just need a simple wrapper like this, like I had the hello and now I need to grab the, the, the name, name from local storage, just write a new simple conta uh, container, you have state, you have component in mount, look at the local storage and passing this, uh, this information to, to hello. Now remove hello from your tree, put hello from local storage there and you're set. This is done. If you have a problem in the future with, uh, with, with local storage, oh, people are not seeing their names, you know exactly what you're, uh, where to look, right? And it's gonna be easy. Um, so the main question that arise now is like, what if I need to reuse logic among different views? So setting up listeners there, this is always like really like cumbersome and very, we repeat a lot. So we need a way to enrich our current components. First enrichment uh, pattern is higher order component. <coughs> it's simply a function that takes at least one component as a parameter and return another component. Uh, the way you think about higher order components is like it will inject uh, some useful prop to, to, my, to my component. Uh, it's super simple to use. Like I have a my component that does whatever and I want to inject information about the Dagobah planet on it. I just call like with Dagobah in my component. Instead of exporting my component, I export like, I call this function. 
The way we implement it is also relatively simple. We have the state here, we have the side effects, uh, and you can see it's a function that, that receives like a, any component. I mount here and put my, my, my props. Of course, this is a simplification. And this is, uh, first of all, like, Higher the components compose really well. This is really good. Like I have my component, I need to, to enrich them with like three different higher the components. I just compose them. I use size me, which is a really nice library to uh, give you information about the current size of your component. My Dagobah and Connect, the most famous of all higher the components that we almost, everybody who works with React work with it. So, all this information will be injected into my component and we'll be happy. The problem is, first of all, your component needs to understand exactly what's the shape of the props you're passing to it. So sometimes higher the component code uh, infects your own like business code. If we use size me, it, it injects like a particular prop with the size and your components need to understand that. That's not good all the time. And the implementation has a lot of detail. Like you need to pass the extra props that you receive. You need to set proper name for debugging, this kind of stuff. It can get a little bit hairy to actually implement one. It, it should be simpler. And then we have render props. Render props is another pattern that does the same thing as higher the component. Uh, it's just another way of doing the same thing. Render props are really simple. I'm gonna read the definition here. It's a component that takes as a prop a function that returns a component and calls it with the intended parameters. So, yeah, this is, this is one of those things that it's like, you should not try to understand by the definition, but you should like look at an example, it's simpler. It's just like a component <laughs> And the render prop can be any prop. Uh, you pass a function. It will call the function with the data that you want. So then you can do whatever you want. Like uh, this Dagobah render prop gives me loading, error, and planet, and I do whatever I want with it. And then I call my intended uh, component with the data, and depending on the branching. Uh, logic I'm doing here. So my planet view here, my error view, my loading view, they don't need to understand which shape of data the render prop uh, gives me. So I, I like this, this separation. And it's uh, also the code seems simpler. So this is how you would implement it. This is actually like a valid render prop. This is the, the good thing. You don't have like those nitty gritty things of higher order component. Uh, and you can see this uh, here, I'm, I'm grabbing the, the, the render prop and calling it as a function with my state. So it's uh, really simple to do that. So none of the previous higher order components problems, we don't have those with render props. Uh, we do not need like any static definitions, we don't need to call it like outside the React life cycle. The problem of render props is that they do not compose well. Like if we need information from like three render props like this uh, example I saw uh, online, it's, it feels like we're on callback hell all over again, right? We're, we, I think we, we solved this problem in the rest of JavaScript, but here we are again. So hire the component of the render prop, use your best judgment depending on, on the situation. The last big question is, what happens when the shared logic involves expensive side effects? Sharing expensive side effects is not very effective. So like if I need to fetch information about this Dago planet, if I use five render props, I don't want to, to, to fetch five different planets. So I use the provider pattern. I need to perform side effects in one component. I need to get the result put on a context. React has the, his, its own context and then makes the results available uh, wherever I, I want in the application with a uh, higher order component or a render props. So uh, the provider pattern now with the new React context API, it's relatively simple to, to implement. I create a context here with initial, initial value. This is my provider. I have the state, I have the, the same fetch uh, logic, I just abbreviated here, and on my render function, I put the, the React provider here with the value, uh, with the state as a value. So whenever I use the, the context consumer anywhere else in the code, it will have access to this uh, information here in, in the three different states, either loading, error, or success. 
So this is, this is how I would use it. Like I have the consumer, the consumer is a render prop. So this is also another validation for render prop. Now it's in React itself. Uh, and I call my view. Uh, then if I have like a code like this, I have only one provider in my, in my tree and I can have like as many day old planets I have even deep in the tree and they will access the information that we fetched on this provider here. Be really cautious with that because it's like invisible stuff, global variable stuff. Like be, be, be careful because uh, usually we try to be as explicit as we can. If container view was 95% of the code I, I've seen and, and written, this is like, I don't know, less than 1%. Usually we should not write things like that, uh, but we use libraries that, that looks like that, so it's good to understand how they work. So summarizing, use container view for almost everything. Use higher order components or render props to share logic between different components and use providers when sharing expensive side effects. So thank you. Uh, yes, uh, hi Lucas, this is Pedro, um, what? I'm in. Um, I was wondering if there's a reason why you can use a, another data layer. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the context would be a kind of data layer for you for that data. Um, so we kind of use container view. Um, at what, um, uh, some components we develop, we kind of use a combination of a provider component and a rent, uh, container view. So what we do is we actually match the um, via selectors then we, we match like the the, the expensive side effect um, via the selector. Then we fetch it from our context. Um, is, is this something you recommend? Yeah. Uh, hi, Pedro. Uh, so let me see if I understood the question well. So you're saying that uh, in your in your projects you do the the expensive side effects in providers. And, and then you select, uh, what, what do you mean by selectors? You mean like functions that... So, um, to not give too much away, we basically cache all the provided data into Redux so that even if you pass it down as a render prop, your oh. own components can oh, yeah. retrieve it from the global cache. Okay, do you so... Think global caches are essentially an anti-pattern? No, 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 no. They, they're not an amp part. Sometimes you, you need global caching. So Redux is a higher abstraction layer uh, than context itself. So Redux is a really good, uh, a really good library that uses the provider pattern that has the, the, it's easy for a child component that is using the global information to also change the global information itself. So I don't think they're conflicting. Like the provider pattern is like more general than Redux, and Redux is like one implementation of the provider pattern using the context with like some nice stuff and a nice. Thinking the container view, one of, one of the things is that it right it couples your container to your view as you mentioned. So I was oh. thinking maybe uh, there was some way around that. Yeah, yeah, like uh, yeah, container view uh, th things are coupled, but a lot of the times uh, I believe that if we try to put everything too much, like hire the component and and render props, we end up with a bunch of really complex generic code that are not being reused. So that's why it's like 90% of the uh, code. Could you precise exactly what kind of library you use for this particular presentation, and actually what kind of library for React uh, should be or like must use? Okay, so for this presentation, I used uh, Reveal JS, but a, 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 it's a, a library that's called Reveal MD. So you just you only write one Markdown file. This is all like on one Markdown file, so it's really simple. I right, Reveal MD. Please look at it. It's really cool. And for React, one library that I can't leave it out. I think uh, go deep on React. Like learn the docs are amazing. Like uh, try to try to stay inside React as much as you can. Don't jump to 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 Redux uh, early. Like make sure your use cases are asking for anything that that that, that you need. So uh, it's always a, a good exercise. As a learning tool, one thing that I really like is look at ReasonML 
and look what they are doing over there. That seems like looking at the future. So a lot of times you look at those different languages that compile to JavaScript, a lot of the really cool things that happen in JavaScript, they were like happening on those places like Clojure Script, Elm, like Fable, and ResML. They would, these things were happening like one, two years before. So if you want to be inspired on your and write like good JavaScript React code, have a look on this place, especially ResML for, for React. That's what I would recommend. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you.